our final uh, case study is from Alex Marshall, um, who's from Clark Energy, uh, again in the US. Uh, Alex, thank you for joining us today. Um, Thank you for that introduction, Kelvin. I will Hi, read out at the end of the um, speaking slot here, so I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, I've got three different sh brief case studies to show you um, from different parts of the world. So Clark Energy, for those of you that don't know me, we are an international specialist in CHP and distributed energy, operating in 28 countries, 7.4 gigawatts of Yambaka gas engines installed with the largest distributor and service provider. We seek to lower costs and carbon emissions, support resilience, deliver turnkey installations backed up by reliable after sales support. So as you can see, we've got a very um, ge geographically mixed re region of countries in which we operate, uh, including you know, Africa, Europe, Australasia, Asia, and I'm currently dialing in from California. So this is relatively early for me in the morning. As a product range, as a business, we have uh, INEO's Yambaka gas engines from quarter of a megawatt to 10 megawatts and TPI's biogas upgrading systems, which are membrane based um, systems for, for upgrading biogas. And we've heard a lot of in, so far in this presentation, this series of presentations, how gas engines can be applied. So historically, just basic gas gensets, um, power modules, so true CHP with electricity, heating and cooling, turnkey power plants. But more and more, what we're seeing is the need to hybridize with other technologies and to have those different power generation systems speak to each other. One of the things I don't think we've mentioned so far is flexible CHP, really pioneered in, in the Netherlands, in um, the greenhouse sector, but that flexible CHP now has applications for grid balancing and microgrid applications. So Yambaka gas engines, um, they are able to operate, operate on st standard natural gas and a range of decarbonized fuels, as mentioned earlier today, biogas, um, concentrated biomethane and, and hydrogen being the key, key ones there. So into the case studies. Um, the first is, is an African case study. Nobody's mentioned too much about Africa so far today, but you know, we, we've seen CHP on gas engines be installed in Nigeria, South Africa, Tunisia, Cameroon. Again, again as mentioned like before with, with resilience, resilience is a key player. I'd say less so for extreme weather events, although they are part, part of the issue. I'd say more the unreliable nature of the African power network. So this particular application is a biogas plant um, located in Malawi, um, in Chikwawa, which is in the south of the country, close to the Mozambique border. Here you have a, um, an ethanol distillery, which is um, manufacturing ethanol to have a domestic source of fuel and to also reduce um, the carbon content of local, um, local petrol uh, and generate renewable, renewable fuel alongside the domestic resource capabilities. So this, this particular project here takes the spent effluent from that biogas plant uh, and bioethanol plant, uses it in a very standard method for, you know, as, as we've seen in, in many other CHP applications, so you have the bioethanol, um, refinery ethanol distillery effluents going into anaerobic digestion, producing a, bi a typical biogas, you know, 50, 50 to 60 percent CH4. And, and generating renewable electricity and heat primarily for self-consumption because there's some challenges with respect to actually selling power to the grid in particular from an African context in, in many countries. Um, the USA um, in, in, in Indiana, close to the previous speaker's location. So here we have Biotown. So this is a, uh, a brand new hybrid project using CHPs, but also um, biogas upgrading facilities. So you have a, a, a very large dairy farm or a series of cattle farms in the local area, as is which is very common across a lot of the Midwest. Um, here they are taking um, that, that cattle slurry from 25,000 cows, six, 600,000 gallons of slurry, three quarters of that is upgraded to RNG for export, and one quarter of that is used for self-consumption. So it's a combination of 15,000 standard cubic feet per minute of raw um, biogas to 1,000 standard cubic feet per minute of, of, of RNG, plus 1.4 megawatts of electrical, and plus a similar amount of thermal. So as you can see, that is a, a straight split of the use of the gas. Um, between that self-consumption demand of renewable electricity and heat and also renewable gas so that those resources can be used elsewhere and typically supported by the Californian RIN notices. 
And then finally, um, there's been a few questions in the chat bar there about how CHP can be integrated with, with, um, with uh, heat pump technology. This particular system is a greenhouse, again, flexible CHP, able to generate um, power flexibly to meet the needs of the greenhouse, but also spill some of that surplus electricity to drive water source heat pumps, which in turn generate four times the amount of renewable heating and, and help heat the greenhouse. And in parallel CO2 recovery from the engine exhaust with Codinox systems to enrich the growing area air of the, growing air of the um, greenhouse to support tomato growth. So a really great example of how CHP engines can be inter integrated uh, at a large commercial scale with, with heat pumps um, the driver here specifically was the renewable heat incentive, which has now um, been shelved. But with the need to decarbonize heat, as mentioned before, with electrification of heat, CHP can still play a part, and in particular with decarbonized gases be part of the overall solution. So thank you very much for your time. Um, and if you'd like to contact me, I'm available here in my U US or UK number. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Um... Let's go back to Africa for a sec, because as you said, we, you know, we haven't touched on it so far. So are you able to just yeah, tell us a bit, what, what, what's, what's the CHP potential in Africa? Uh, and it, is, it, is it diverse or is it really leaning towards uh, a particular use, such as the, the one you showed us? The first challenge you have with, 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 with gas availability in Africa is, is the lack of natural gas distribution lines and the lack of legislation to support biogas generation. That said, countries which are very gas rich, such as Nigeria, Tunisia, Algeria, have you know, significant industrial resources. Uh, in, in Nigeria, we saw you know, innovative companies like Diageo bring the first tri-generation plant on perhaps 10, 15 years ago now, built in phases at a brewery. So you see you know, international le le legislation driving towards energy efficiency and also um, the um, uh, cost-effective use of power. But unfortunately, a lot of the gas engines deployed you know, in Nigeria still do not have heat recovery on, so there is still potential. But the needs, you know, the the, the over, you know, the overriding driver in a lot of Africa is, um, power, you know, is stable sources of power. So it's really a uh, an alternative to diesel. We're seeing countries like Cameroon, where they have um, much higher gas prices. That energy efficiency play is more important. And then South Africa too. They've they've been doing this for a number of years. But the, but the local supplies of gas are are limited at the moment till LNG comes on. Yeah, yeah. Um... I've got another quick question for you, Alex, but just before I ask, if I can ask um, Ia Carlos and uh, Philip and Kevin just to come back for a sec um, for a, a bit of a Q&A. Uh, Alex, you've uh, told us you're sitting there in California. California and you know, New York have some regulations where they want to increasingly electrify um, thermal uh, and steam. You know, what, what's the outlook that you're seeing in, in the U.S.? For CHP, is it leaning perhaps heavily to, is towards more states like the one you're sitting in at the moment? I think, I think it's a real mixed bag, depending upon where you look at it, and it seems to be d driven somewhat along um, the political lines. So you have a number of states which are prohibiting the utilization of natural gas in new buildings, for example. Uh -huh. And then you have a large central swathe of the US, which is doing the opposite. They're prohibiting the pro prohibition of gas. So you've kind of a, a dichotomy of different um, applications there. But what one of the states recently, Michigan, has just announced CHP supporting legislation. So there, there are some states that have made great state, but great strides towards energy efficiency. And then there are, there are others which have got further to go. Um, one thing for the US is it's very market driven. And at the moment, drivers for um, heat pumps and that type of technology are not yet as strong as they could be. 